Okay, so things went crazy when I left you off, and um, the simple job is not simple anymore. So the good news is I did get it shimmed where I wanted to be. Uh, you should be able to see the paint lines match up perfectly now to where they were. The bad news is I didn't take into effect that the belt line was going to be off a little bit. So I was trying to overcompensate on the belt line down there. And I went a little crazy and did things that I didn't have to do. Okay, so let's have a talk, right? So they say when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And I take some exception with that because I did have a plan. I unfortunately just didn't stick to that plan. Now it has been years since I had to adjust to one of these slide out rooms before. And at the time, I thought I had to adjust the uh, bolts on this in order to uh, raise the room up. As that's the most common place people go to adjust slide out rooms. This has four slide out arms on it. And so I figured the other two would, ca would fix the problem. But of course, Beaver, as high quality, had it wrapped behind this carpet and this carpet and everything. You have to take the uh, frame of the door off. Well, we have to take the compartment door off in order to get the frame of the compartment door that's riveted on off. So you can pull back the carpet so you can get access to the bolts. And then, of course, I had to move that filler panel so I could actually wrap my arm around to get to the uh, mounting points for the bolts there and hold the nut on the other side. Now, if you guys remember at the very start of this video, I said we don't want to do that because I've already done that before and it doesn't have any effect on the overall adjustment of the slide out whatsoever. And yet here I am doing that. So to say I lost control of the narrative would be a giant understatement, but here's why I did that because I got frustrated. When I left you guys off, I was just using this adjustable roller right here so I could not have to worry about the shim heights of everything as I was building the whole thing. I was just using this temporarily in place right there, running the slide out room in and out. And for some reason I got hyper fixated on lining up the belt line molding here and the belt line molding here. Not lining up the paint lines because the paint lines is where the factory would have had it originally and the belt line there's uh, differences in the slide out box and the slide or the uh, side wall itself. So I shouldn't have been hyper fixated on the belt line. And so that hyper fixation led me to keep adjusting this up and up and up without really having any support underneath it. And that's when I discovered that it was actually bending. I don't know if you can see the whole thing bending up at the end right here. You can kind of see how it's definitely bent now. Now I have had success with these rollers before and a lot of manufacturers do use them. I was really surprised that this one bent, but also I was trying to make a video showing how to do it easily without actually securing it down correctly. So that's pretty much on me. But I didn't know it was bending at the time and so then I got really confused about everything and figured I was doing everything wrong at this point. And that's why I tore it all apart trying to fix the problem. You can even see right there, I drilled a new set hole. So after I adjusted it on the uh, adjustable slots right here, I could lock that arm into place. And all I had happen was this whole slide out room bound up, it wouldn't close all the way. So then I had to reconsider and reevaluate my entire process and start all over again for the third time. And go back to the drawing board to how my understanding of physics actually works. So on the original slide out roller right here, all the, uh, I guess, weight is going straight down onto the roller and being transferred onto the framing right there. So straight down, handling the weight. On this roller right here, while you could mount it this direction right there, it's gonna be very difficult to get screws right underneath it. So if we were to, mount it, there's a possibility even with the screws right here, because I was going to use this one too, the whole thing could uh, torque over a little bit because all the mounting hardware is here, because this is actually supposed to be mounted like that, again, 
the weight of the slide out room goes straight down onto the hardware down below and gets transferred that way. So this one um, was causing me a little bit of headache because the weight actually goes right back this point, not to the mounting tabs down below. And the amount of weight I was putting on here was causing the problem. So long story short, I decided to go back to the factory roller style and create the shims for uh, the slide out roller that I didn't want to have to go through, and which is why I was using the adjustable one. So now you can see that roller right there. I put on a piece of uh, 3 8 plywood. But of course the weight of the slide out room pushing up on this uh, FRP was actually causing some damage to the FRP. We saw that before it was starting to crack and break. And so I knew I wanted to put a, a metal uh, shoe for that roller to actually glide on. And so then I temporarily installed this pretty thick eighth inch thick aluminum sheet shoe for it to ride on. And then I just added a quick little uh, shim right there, about eighth inch of ABS for shim purposes. And so now I basically do have the arms back to where they were originally. I put that roller, raised it up a little bit, and put some shims on it, and then protected the underside of the slide out floor so the roller is not damaging the floor and shim that uh, shoe down a little bit so it would raise the slide out room up a little bit more too. So now if we go ahead and bring the slide out room in. Pay no attention to that bouncing. That was just the uh, shoe that I put on isn't quite long enough to reach the back roller yet. So it had to pop up onto it. So now when we come around right here, you can see this belt line is almost perfect. That paint line is perfect all the way up. If we look at this belt line molding right there, it's definitely off, but the paint line is actually perfect from where the factory had it. That paint line is perfect, that paint line is perfect, and so on all the way up. The uh, gap on the side here is nice and even. The gap all the way across the top is nice and even. And the gap down here is nice and even. So if I would have just stuck to uh, the plan I put together originally, I would have been done with this three or four hours ago instead of uh, redoing it for the third time. So with all that being said, the next step for me before I finish doing the uh, actual repair is to put this back together because it's not a good idea to be moving the slide out room in and out with all this loose hardware. It's basically just going in and out with this one bolt right there. So I'm going to put that back together <laughs> then we'll put the rollers on and I'll show you what the ultimate plan is going to be because mounting those straight down rollers is a little bit more difficult with the slide out room in the end position. In order to finish this up is run the slide out room all the way out again. Then I need to reattach all the hardware and the bolts right there to feel good about running this in and out repeatedly. And then they hid the bolts for that arm right there behind the carpet. In fact, these top ones I had to cut off because they were way back there where you couldn't get to them and they actually ground the head of the bolt down in order to uh, get it in between uh, this point in there. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is to uh, help out future James or future technician. Instead of wrapping this carpet around, I'll be cutting it off right there and then just paint all of this black so that if this ever does have to be worked on in the future, you don't have to take all the hardware and the door off in order to get there. But I had it, I just went ahead and I sealed up the sides right there to try to keep air infiltration out too. So let me just uh, get everything back to where I started and then we'll actually fix the slide out. I swear we're gonna eventually fix this slide out. All right, so that Z frame is put back on again. I won't put the compartment door on yet. I do have to clean up my mess I made over there. 
and now I can put the bolts in and then I'll cut the carpet and paint it black once I'm all done. Okay. So this uh, sheet metal was riveted into the bottom of this frame right there. So I just got a piece of flat aluminum and riveted through the carpet into the frame. Alright, so now all I really have to do is paint this section right there. Very, very simple. And I think I'm ready to move on. Doesn't look too bad. And yeah, if you notice, there's only four bolts on each arm. Considering I've been running the whole stride up room in and out with uh, two bolts, I feel like uh, four bolts per arm is more than enough, just considering there's four arms, I think. One, two, three, four, and the ram, yeah. If we take a step back, now that matches that. Doesn't look too bad. I'll put another coat on it. And then it'll look really good. I think even if you look underneath, it'll almost look like the factory did that. It's a cool light though. All right, if you guys remember, it all started with this seal. We'll get to that eventually. <sighs> We've also been just resting on that roller right here. Basically all the pressure's on this one roller. The wood's a little bit deformed. You can see all the pressure that's on there. And I just have this plate above that's there as a temporary plate above to keep the uh, FRP from getting damaged by all the pressure in one spot. So what I need to do is figure out a way to mount this roller onto the ground without being able to get screws into there very well. I want to put another roller right here. And if I'm going to put another roller right there, I'd like to have a way to, instead of just having two plates, maybe connect all the plates together. We'll see how that works. And then that way that should hopefully carry the weight of the uh, slide out room back here a lot better. All right, so when this was built, the rollers would have been installed before the slide out room wasn't installed or put in place. And I'm not gonna pull the entire slide out room in or pull the entire slide out room out in order to install some rollers back here. So I guess the first thing I need to do is jack the slide out room back up again. All right. So just go ahead and jack this back up again. Right about there. Look at that. The roller came right out. And then based on my selection of available metal, I'll have to do two uh, skids on it rather than one all the way across, but that's fine. I know the thickness that I have to have everything. It doesn't matter where it is, so I just had this spaced out on the top. So if I bring this thickness down to the roller, because the aluminum that I'll be using at the top is thinner than this aluminum, then I can uh, build a, a mount to mount the roller to, and then make that mount able to be mounted to the floor without having to do crazy, crazy things like drill holes to the floor of the slide out in order to hit the holes down here on the roller to go into the floor there. I've done that before, but I'm hoping not to do that. And of course, I have to space all this and build this all out because my original plan to use an adjustable roller failed when it bent. And uh, this was supposed to take up all the effort for me. I was just supposed to put this down Put a ski on the uh, underside of the slide out room, raise the slide out, adjust this, and then call it good. But then it decided to bend. And I've had good luck with this in the past, so I don't know if the metal changed or it's just too heavy. All right, so it looks like my total width is about, or thickness, about three quarters of an inch. Uh, I do have to subtract a sixteenth of an inch because this will be the thickness of the new ski. And I think if I just go with a 5H plywood right here, that'll do what I want. I do have a sheet right here. Well, not a sheet, but a big enough piece. I should be able to 
use that. I just need to know two more things. How far apart I want these to be, right there. And then I can build a, hopefully, an easy to install roller platform. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw it out. And I probably might be utilizing this piece of sheet metal right there. Extra points if you know where it's from. All right, that's what I've come up with. Let's see if I can't make it work. Well, hopefully, this isn't too big. Probably is. Probably is very too big. Okay, see, yeah, it's too big. I can't get it in there in one piece. I'm gonna have to notch this out. I don't really need it to be square. It's just easier to cut. So I'll just have to notch it out kind of like that. Cause the roller's gonna go there and right there. I just want some wood back here. All right, there, it's notched. Guess this is why I prototype, right? Okay, I was able to maneuver that in place and then hopefully get this right about to there. All right, I think that does what I wanted to do. And then that'll go right about there. Right where it used to be. And then when we go inside, look at that. I have the plywood I can get to very easily through this little access hole that Beaver gave me. Maybe it's a little bit of a hack together plan, but remember, most of these major manufacturers that everybody still knows of today, like Jayco, uh, Winnebago, Numar, even like the uh, Alpha or the Bounder product, they just started out in somebody's garage. They were just building these things by hand, just like a house would be built. So you don't have to have a production of facility to build or engineer an RV. Now these rollers are going to be uh, putting all the lateral movement, or it'll just be weight coming straight down onto the rollers. Uh, so I just have to keep the rollers from moving around. As you saw before, I was able to run the slide out room in and out, even with those uh, rollers floating without any hardware securing them down. So I just have to uh, secure the rollers to that piece of uh, plywood. Which will transfer the weight to uh, the floor right there to the framing underneath. And I just have to figure out a way to mount the plywood so that it doesn't shift around. Those back screws that you, I already told you about, that'll be easy. That'll keep it from shifting too much. I just need to put one or two things right here to keep it from moving around. The weight of this slide out, which is quite substantial. All right, I'll just be using my favorite screws again. I'm just gonna secure these rollers down temporarily, kind of. I say temporarily because these are sticking out down below and I can't put this on the floor like that. So I'll just take the grinder and cut those off. Now these screw holes are pretty close to the edge of the plywood right there. And I don't want them to blow out. So what I'm gonna do is just through bolt these right there from underneath. I'm going to do the same thing on this uh, leading edge too, just to kind of resist the desire for the roller to pop over from the pressure of the slide out too. And I'll just be using these uh, stainless steel uh, bevel headed screws here. Now they are bolts and I have some nylocks to go with them. I'll just be putting them right in there. But I do need to countersink the other end so those screw heads are flush. Just like that. Okay. So those are pretty much installed. I just have two more bolt holes. I got something special planned for those. Using this piece of stainless steel that's already bent for me. Of course, I always prefer to use something that already exists rather than make my own. I 
and stainless is ridiculously strong. And then just utilizing the last two holes in the rollers right there, I will sandwich this underneath. Giving me a front lip, I can actually screw into the opening without causing any problem with the thickness of it. All right. So we look like that. Get a couple extra bolts in the middle to keep it from shifting around. But this is uh, my new engineered roller guide. All right, that wasn't so bad, was it? I mean, kind of bad. Huh. Wowie. I move it back to there. Now you can see I have a lip to screw into the aluminum framing right there. And because of the design of this lower uh, seal, if you guys remember from a long time ago, it just rivets on the back. So I don't think that 32nd of an inch of stainless steel is going to affect it at all. So now I can screw in down there. And then look at that. I have my holes to screw in right there too. And all those combined should keep the uh, guides from shifting around. Now we're just trying to lift up the back just a little bit. Okay. So to keep this thing from shifting around, because I got basically that lined up on where it used to be. Right? I think we feel pretty good about that. I'm just going to go ahead and drop the slide back down on top of it. Get this out of the way. I'll just be riveting this on, so just have to fill a number of holes. Alright, so I got three of them in right there. I'll just be using some rivets. Nothing special, just three sixteenths rivets. I'll just go with the standard rivet head right there. This aluminum tubing is incredibly thick. But we'll just go ahead and use my rivet gun. Look at that. All right, so that should keep it from trying to come out. Now we just have to go inside. All right, now I'll just be using these about inch and a half uh, Craig jig screws. Uh, pocket screws, they should uh, grab onto the subfloor. Securely, but they have a non-threaded shoulder. That should be a little bit stronger and it won't grab onto my plywood because I don't want that to happen. Okay, so now that should be secured from shifting, uh, I guess, laterally or on the floor itself. So theoretically, all I should have to do now is make the two uh, skis that are gonna, or shoes that are gonna go on the bottom of the floor right there. All right, so pretty much the last thing I have to do is put the ski underneath right here so that we aren't damaging the FRP with all the extra pressure we're putting on there. I uh, staggered that roller to kind of keep everything in alignment as it goes in and out. Um, so I have to jack this back up again. So that's why I already have these cut to width. I just have to measure and cut them to length. So I'm all the way against the back of the cabinet there. And honestly, 38 is about where it needs to be, but we might as well, well, go to 39. 39. Okay. All right, I can feed it in on the floor here underneath the slide out because it's too long to fit in the other way. I'll just slide on top of that row. And hopefully slide it back over here. And slide it back and then hopefully Right about there looks pretty good. Let me go on the outside. Right, now I can just center it. Looks like. On the roller right there. Because I will be putting some screws right here. I want to make sure that these screws don't engage with the roller or the roller uh, mount itself. So I do want to make sure it's as centered as I can so I can get the screws. Because I can put up a screw there, 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 and there. All right, here's my rough measurements of where I'm going to put holes. Might be a little too many, but I'd rather have too many at this point. Now, I know in a previous video I just used some ProFlex to uh, adhere this to uh, the inner side of a slide-out. 
But today I'm going to be using the 3M urethane. Do not use this as if this is going to be going on top of carpet because this will ooze out and it will cause problems. Luckily for me, you guys see it's going right onto tile flooring and it shouldn't be touching the flooring at all. But if it was going to the living room where the carpet was, I would not be using this. But this is a far superior adhesive to that. I think that should be more than enough. It's going to be difficult to get this in there without creating a big mess over there. So I have to be a little bit safe over here. Just remember, whenever you're working with urethane, it will cover you somehow, no matter what you do. It's almost like Annie sees. Uh, it gets all over the place, so definitely wear some gloves. Well, there you go. I got it all over me. He was even wearing gloves. All right, let me grab some screws. I'll just be using these, I don't know, about an inch and a half lath wood screws, so they're pointy and not self-tappers. I have it lined up on the line that I put there. I'll just put some screws in. Oh look, I actually found framing. What are the chances? Because we covered this already, I had it stick a very thick tubing, so it's going to be easier to pop rivet this on. So I've already pre-drilled it. All right, let's just do the rest of them real fast as I get covered in urethane again. All right, so here's the update. The framing was right about here, all the way across, so I was able to just use screws everywhere else where the framing wasn't. I just have one more ski to put in, but I don't have to do full length in that because there's no roller back there. I just have to go to this point right there where the roller is to here, so that'll be a lot shorter. All right, so let's find some framing there too. And I think I can go ahead and lower this. And everything should be in place and ready to go. Okay. We got the uh, lights on. This has been quite the long ordeal. I was supposed to do a quick, easy job with an adjustable roller, and it's turned to uh, a much bigger job than I want it to be. That seemed pretty smooth. Okay. Remember this all just started because I wanted to change out a wiper seal. And I think we look as good as it's ever gonna look, right? Looks about perfect. I can't deny this was a lot bigger project than I planned on it being. I still have to put that panel back on and of course that lower wiper seal. By itself is about a hour job, so I'm not looking forward to that. And then after I get that done, I can finally put the new wiper seal on. But what I'll do is once I finish the panel and the lower wiper seal, I'll check back in and I'll give you guys an update. Well, I definitely wish I could tell you putting that back on was easy, but it wasn't. But now, that's not loose anymore. Put this back on. This has the easy to latch one, so you can just put it in the, the, knuck, in the knuckle there and slide it down. There we go. Gonna bolt on right down there. Alright, and just like that, this slide out job that was supposed to be really simple in a quick easy video is pretty much done and adjusted. I'd hope to just use an adjustable roller to show you how easy the job was gonna be, but I didn't plan on it bending my roller. You can see. So I ended up having to go with the original factory ones. I think Monica used those too. I tried to put a link to it, but ultimately I had to uh, add some shoes for the roller so they wouldn't damage the uh, FRP underneath. And cut to the chase. I kind of did the same thing over here on the bedroom slide too. We'll run it back in one more time and make sure it's still working. Uh, save the seal for another time.
And my generator exhaust I noticed was uh, falling down at the original mounts right there. And so I added that piece of uh, angle that I had laying around to the, uh, I don't know, call it an outrigger off the frame there and supported the weight of the exhaust pipe itself so that uh, that's secured. And you wouldn't think that'd be that big of a deal, but even trying to mount it to the wall, there wasn't framing right there. And the isolator lines up where the framing is, so that wouldn't have helped anyway. So <sighs> I'm okay with that. This goes in. Uh, hmm. Should I go a little bit wider? I feel like I'm going to go a little bit wider. Those might be too big. I cannot deny this is a lot more work than I planned on it being. It's supposed to be a very simple project.